Welcome back here on TV15. Another visit with the head coach of the Ruffers, Josh Blankenship. I'm your host, Bill Huddleston. We talk all things Ruffer football. Josh, I always say it's a great day to be a Ruffer, but last Friday night when the lights were turned off, it was still a great day to be a rougher, but the scoreboard wasn't quite what Muskogee had expected against Broken Arrow. No, and we knew we were up against it. Uh, Broken Arrow's a very talented team, uh, and uh, they coming into our place, and I was kind of hoping we would put up more of a fight, but we didn't. Uh, that being said, uh, we got to turn the page and move forward. We got a Westmore team that we're going to uh, play at their place, and uh, uh, they're, again, very big, very physical team that uh, we need to come ready to fight. Well, it was a Hall of Fame night as former Ruffers were enshrined into the Muskogee Athletic Hall of Fame. But let's go back and take a look at a few of the bright moments for Muskogee in the ball game against the Broken Arrow Tigers last week. And we start off with defense. Defense started off by making a few plays. Uh, uh, obviously, Ty Beasley uh, making tackles like he has all year. Uh, we had him in another position. We've got some injuries at the linebacker position, so we had him bumped out. Uh, Bryson Bell making a great interception. Uh, pass break up there by Keyshawn and uh, Burns, and then Bryson able to uh, find the football and then with a great return. Then here we'll see one of the added advantage Muskogee does have again this year, 36-yard field goal off the toe of Chase Soper. Yeah, it's great having a guy that can kick the ball uh, through the uprights. Gives you another weapon. Now we're going to see a little bit of the offense here. We'll find out real quickly a big target for Quintosh Cherry. Well, he's easy to find, that's for sure, and uh, it sure is nice to watch him be able to not only catch the ball but then run away from everybody like that. Uh, uh, we're going to try and find more ways to be able to get him the football because he's, he's an obvious weapon. Tremal Ivey there with the touchdown and then the following point after touchdown. And on these extra points, those sometimes make or break the difference in wins and losses. Well, two years ago we had Broken Arrow at our place, and if we make the uh, extra point after we scored the uh, game-tying touchdown at the end of the game, if we had hit our extra point, we would have, we believe, won the ball game. Here's a young man that just continues to get better day by day and shows a little bit of the quick feet he's got to sprint up the field. Well, and he would he'd be the first to tell you it's those guys up front that are getting better and better every week, which allows him to do those things. Tyreek Beasley, and then not to be outdone. Big brother Ty comes back and makes the tackle here. And then nice little double team again. We see nice effort with Beasley again making a big stop. So Ty's our leader. He's our quarterback on the defensive side of the ball. And even if we have to uh, uh, move him around, you know, due to injuries or whatever, uh, he still is the guy calling out the defense and the fronts and the, the coverage and uh, getting everybody lined up. Uh, he's just a warrior. I mean, he battles all game long. And you see right there, he's the one still making tackles as the game goes on. And, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're glad to have him, uh, obviously, for what he's doing. Um, how he produces on the field, but it's his leadership that really is what we've got to have, and he's doing a great job of that. I saw a quote yesterday on uh, on Twitter. It says, a positive mind creates a positive action. And I think our next guest in the next segment is a true example of that when we get the chance to meet Grayson Ham. Grayson's, uh, we'll talk more about it when we get back, but Grayson's definitely a champion, and we wanted to have him on. We'll be visiting with Grayson Ham, a member of the Muskogee High School football team, and our champion of the week with Rough for Football here on TV15. Continues with the coach Josh Blankenship and myself, Bill Huddleston, right on to the other side of the break. Welcome back on this segment of Ruffer Football here on TV15. Bill Huddles along with the coach of the Ruffers, Josh Blankenship. And, J.B., we always get a lot of enjoyment out of recognizing members of the football team, and I know you're equally as proud of this man that sits between us. Well, uh, Grayson's new to our team. Uh, approached me uh, last year, wanted to know, even though it was his senior year, wanted to know if he could come out and, uh, and uh, join the team. And, and usually in those type of situations, um, you know, I have to explain to him the odds of you being able to play, uh, having not played, and then all of a sudden coming out your senior year are not real good. Um, but if you're willing to do all the things that we ask uh, our players to do, then we'd love to have you. He's done everything and then some. Uh, what I really am proud of him for is uh, he doesn't hesitate on what he needs to do academically. He's taken uh, several AP classes. Uh, I don't know how many, but a ton. <laughs> way more than, than most of our football players combined. Yeah. Uh, and he's got that load academically, and he still shows up to practice. He still comes up and gives us everything he's got. He's willing to do whatever we ask him to do with a great attitude, great work ethic. And we want to recognize that because you don't get to see him out on the field as much as you do some of the other guys. Uh, but he's a champion, and we want to make sure that gets acknowledged. Grayson, when you went to Coach Blanket Chip, what was going on in your heart and in your mind about wanting to be a part of this football team? I just, 
it was a great community. Everybody loved being on the football team, and I'd always wanted to try it, and I'd always continuously talk myself out of it. And so I decided it's my senior year, and I last chance to get a part of something great. Why not go and be a part of a, an opportunity to set an example for others to follow? Now, as you had to earn your spot, in other words, earn your jersey to get out there, has it been worth the price that you had to pay? I think so. I really enjoy it, and it's really been a, a, a great addition to my life. Okay. So. All right. Now, Coach talked about those honors classes. He didn't remember exactly how many honors classes you're taking, but I know you know the class schedule. Tell us, tell us how, not only what classes you're in, but uh, how the grades are going. Well, uh, I have pre-AP calculus first hour, and that one's going pretty good. I like that. Uh, second hour, I have AP physics, and my grades weren't so great in there, but I brought those back up. Um, I have engineering. Uh, principles of engineering and that one's awesome. I love that. Grades are great in there. Uh, I have AP English for literature and Comper. Sounds something. to me like it's an all AP lineup there. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. what are your plans after high school? I'd like to go to college. I'm not 100% sure where, wherever I'm going to get the biggest scholarship to or something like that. I mean, looking to pursue what kind of a degree? Uh, I'd like to go into nuclear engineering. Okay. Get a master's in nuclear engineering. <laughs> See? Yeah. So so you understand why it's an easy choice for Coach Blankenship to recognize Grayson because he does have those high aspirations and and can you can you calculate some sort of formula of success with these honors classes that you're going through to uh, help your teammates find a way to get the victory? I I'd like to I'd like to think that I could, but no, it's just all hard work and determination. Yeah, everybody it. pulling their own weight mm -hmm. and doing with their job each and every play and uh, just getting better day by day. Right. It's not. There's no real complex calculation or anything like that. It's just going out there and giving your all to get to the win of the game. If there was, we'd be rich. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And this guy might be diagnosing the uh, the proper formula. But Grayson Ham is our champion of the week. You heard his list of classes and the fact that he can get take care of all those class responsibilities and take care of his duties out on the football field and be recognized as a champion of the week. Deserves a big pat on the back, Coach. I know you're very, very proud of this young man. Extremely proud. Grayson Ham, our guest in this segment. We'll be back in a moment. Coach B will give us a scouting report on week number five in the Jaguars Westmore when TV 15's coverage of Muskogee Ruffer football continues following this time out. Welcome back here again on TV 15. Coach Josh Blankenship, Ruffers now 0-1 in district play, travel on the road against another very good football mm -hmm. team, Westmore. I mean, I look at the schedule that all the teams within District 6A2 have played, and I find it hard to accept that there's any team other than Muskogee that has played the quality of opponents that you played, what, the first four weeks and now heading into number five with Westmore on the on the horizon. We really don't have an off week all year long. Even uh, Edison, who we beat last year, uh, they're having a heck of a year uh, really turning their program around. Uh, that's just the way it is. I mean, that's the nature of 6A football. And uh, uh, while I do think our schedule is front-loaded as far as uh, the <laughs> toughest teams, um, you know, it's still there's a good team we play every week. And uh, uh, ultimately, we believe that we've got to win uh, four games and get our district points to put ourselves in position to be able to make the playoffs. Obviously, we want to win every game that we play. And that's how we prepare. We prepare to win this game, and we prepare to get into the playoffs. So uh, that those goals haven't changed, and they're not gone. Uh, we're one game down into district play with uh, six to go. Billy Langford's Westmore Jaguars unbeaten on the season, a potent offense and a pretty stingy defense. Well, I think it's one of the best defenses we've seen, if not the best uh, to this point. Uh, they don't have the the guys up front that uh, maybe Broken Arrow has as far as what they look like. Uh, when you walk out on the field, uh, their defense isn't quite uh, as imposing 
in how they look. Um, but man, they fly to the football. Uh, the very talented secondary uh, linebacker crew. Uh, I think they're the best defense that we've seen. Uh, offensively, they're, they're still doing what they did last year, and they've got some huge offensive linemen that they're going to line up, and they're going to tell you to stop us. And they got a quarterback and some running backs that they can go. And then they've got some uh, big receivers that they can throw to when they're ready to take some shots. But uh, ultimately, their bread and butter is they're going to hammer you down the, down the middle between the tackles and tell you to stop them. Well, while that's a scouting report on the opponent for the Ruffers and Westmore, Josh, I still know you believe and the coaches and the players understand that it's not about them, it's right. about the green and white. Well, and that's always our focus. It's it's We're going to have a scouting report and we're going to plan uh, and prepare for the team that we're getting ready to face, but ultimately uh, we've got to get better every week for us to be in a position to make the playoffs. And we said that week one, it hasn't changed here going into week five. Uh, for us to reach our goals, we've got to get better every week. Uh, and that's the one thing I didn't like about what we did on Friday night was we didn't go compete well enough to actually get better. Uh, we've got to compete every day. Uh, obviously in practice is where we're going to get better, but on Friday nights when we turn on the lights, turn on the scoreboard, that's another opportunity for us to learn how to win, whether it be win the game or win some small victories within the game. Uh, we've got to take advantage of those opportunities. Time for the Ruffers to go be that mean rougher dog when they go on the field Friday night at Moore against the Westmore Jaguars. Game time, we'll remind you again, is 7 o'clock if you're making the trip over there. Now, if you're not going to be able to make the trip with us, you can follow us online at rougherfootball.com and, of course, listen to myself along with Nick Hampton with the radio broadcast on 100.3 FM. So it's time to turn the dogs loose. You know, let the dogs out, I guess would be the situation. You, you're baiting me, but you want me to ask you who let them out? Uh, yeah, well, no. let's, let's let them out. Let's get it done Friday night against the Westmore Jaguars, and we'll hope to talk about a rougher win next week here on TV 15. For the coach of the Ruffers, Josh Blankenship, and our captain of the week, our champion of the week, Grayson Ham. I'm Bill Huddleston saying so long. We'll see you next time here on TV 15.